Hi, I'm Valder Beebe, host of The Valder Beebe Show, a new kind of spiritual talk show. Broadcast on FM radio, internet websites, and print publications. I am well known for that celebrity interview. Interviews that we conduct in studio, by telephone, and by satellite with today's most fascinating people. I'm Valder Beebe, and I'll see you on ValderBeebeShow.com. Good morning, Melissa Dela Cruz. Thank you for joining me here in Dallas, Texas on the Valder BB Show. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, we get to talk about something in between. We get to talk about your latest novel, Something in Between. Yes, we do. <laughs> All right. Give me a synopsis of it. I've read it, but I want my audience to be familiar with it. Sure. It's about a 17-year-old Jasmine de Los Santos, who's a smart, hardworking Filipino-American girl who does everything right. You know, she doesn't go to parties because she wants to study. She wants to work hard. And she's class president. She's valedictorian. She's the head cheerleader. And she wins this amazing national scholarship to any college of her choice. And she thinks her future is secured. Here's her golden ticket to the American dream. And then she goes home to tell her parents. And instead of being happy for her and calling all their relatives in the Philippines to brag about her, uh, they confess and they tell her that they're so sorry, but she can't accept this because they don't have a green card and they're in the country illegally. So it shatters her world. And the story in the book is all about what she does after in her journey to fight to stay in the country and to fight for her American dream. Is the book just timely or did you write it because of the politics behind immigration? You know, I think it just happens to be timely. Um, I'm not a very political person, and I wanted to make sure that the book could be read by anybody, regardless of their political leaning. I really just wanted to shed light on the story of one family's struggle on their journey to becoming American and their journey to trying to stay in this country and being trapped in the system. Um, I'm an immigrant myself, and while our, my family story is not Jasmine's story, um, I wanted to, I felt like uh, as an immigrant, I could really write something about, you know, the issue. And I guess it's something that has been in my mind because, you know, you hear about it so much. But, you know, it wasn't written for a certain uh, time. I think we just got lucky, I guess. <laughs> okay, so the previous book you wrote it was a totally different genre to, than this. Why did you switch? You know, I write a lot of different books. Um, I write fantasy. I write paranormal. I write kind of, you know, light beach reads. And as I've been a young adult author for almost 20 years now, um, I think as I've grown up in the genre, I also want to tell stories that are maybe a little bit more serious, a little bit more realistic. You know, now that I'm a mom myself, you know, I find myself being drawn to telling, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more serious stories than I have been. But I still love my Disney stories. I still love writing Descendants. I'm in the middle of writing um, a Descendants book right now. So right now I'm, I'm in, uh, in the world of Disney. <laughs> Okay, so you could kind of identify with your uh, uh, protagonist and your story a little bit, even though your story is different. How has your transition into the American dream been for you? You know, it's uh, it's been a long journey, uh, maybe even longer than Jasmine's. Uh, I came here as a teenager at 13, and I didn't get my citizenship until I was 40 and uh, married and had a baby, had a kid. And, uh, you know, it's a frustrating experience, but you never give up. And I think a lot of immigrants have a lot of optimism. And, uh, you know, they told us, uh, you just have to wait. That's what you have to do. So we waited and we finally got, a, I finally got my reward and I was very happy with it. But, you know, I did want to uh, tell that story about, you know, about loving your country, but not really feeling 100% American. You know, I would get jury duty letters and I'd say, nope, sorry, can't go in jury duty. I only have a green card still. I'm still waiting for my citizenship. Um, you know, I haven't been able to vote. This is going to be the first election where I get to vote. So I'm very excited. But it is an exciting journey. 
Okay, just sum your book up for us. What can we learn from uh, the story of Jasmine in the book? Is there anything for us to learn? Because I believe this is just my opinion, and I get in trouble for this all the time. <laughs> Uh, we take being Americans for granted. Most people don't travel outside of the United States, so they really don't know the value. Yeah, and, you know, I think that, you know, there's a quote in the book that says, uh, nobody uh, loves uh, America more than its immigrants, you know, and uh, and that's something that uh, even my American friends, uh, my uh, husband who was born and raised here, um, coming from Ohio, and, uh, you know, they don't realize what a privilege it is to be American, how hard people fight to get to this country, how much they sacrifice to come here um, because of the American ideals of freedom and, uh, you know, the pursuit of happiness and the fact that, you know, as long as you work hard, you can make it here. Um, so I think, yeah, people definitely take it for granted if you don't understand how hard it is for other people who don't have it, you know, and uh, when they come here, they work, you know, um, really, really hard to have something that everybody else takes for granted. So I want people, you know, especially young people to realize how much of a priv how privileged they are and also to hear a story that uh, of somebody who doesn't have that privilege, who doesn't have that entitlement, um, who has to fight to have something that, you know, some people are just born with um, who are lucky enough. So, you know, empathy and uh, learning somebody else's stories, being in somebody else's shoes, uh, reading a book uh, about a character who's different from you. I think those are all good things for young kids to, um, to experience. Melissa De La Cruz, I see why you're the number one best-selling author for your previous book, and I think you're going to go that way with this one. Where can my audience find out more about you? You seem fascinating. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I am on the web at melissa-delacruz.com, and I'm always on Twitter, whether I'm writing or I'm not writing, uh, at Twitter, uh, dash Melissa De La Cruz. Okay, something between, in between, something between is out today. You can get your copy, but if you don't get a copy, I'm giving away a few copies, so go to my Facebook page, click on the icon, and you might be a winner. Melissa De La Cruz, thank you for being my guest today, and thank you for writing such a poignant book. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much, Valder. Thank you for having me. It's my joy.